traders who's ready to get of course another start swing trading started here i'm ready to get after a team i'm already into some trades just started seeing a little bit of a turn here towards the close are we really going to be taking some of these over the weekend find out right here on start swing trading let's get right to the action let's talk about what we see in the spy overall and the cues let's get right to it as you guys can see here, the SPY is showing a little bit of some topping action. We'll see if we actually start seeing that decline come in. One thing that you can see here on the chart is you see a lot of that topping action, right? Kind of you can see this kind of trend line that we could draw up here. You can see from this action, we've kind of been kind of chopping around here and just been stuck in this kind of channel. Rejected it once, rejected it twice, rejected it three times, was looking for that fourth run, didn't get it. Now I'm seeing that turnaround. I think we see a little bit of a turnaround here towards the close. Similar pattern I see here on the queues. Let's talk a little bit about that. You guys can see how this is kind of getting up there. Now starting to kind of break down some topping action just as of late up in the 318.50 area. Now we're going to see if we're going to come down here and pull back after a really nice comeback in technology names today. So keep eyes out there. We'll see what happens. And what do you guys think about the new layouts? I've been trying some new things, make myself bigger. I know you guys don't want to see me too much, but hey, just see so that you guys can get a little bit of some different action here. Let's take a look at the trades that I'm in right now team i want to run through it so that you guys don't miss the opportunities that i'm taking shots on you guys can take shots on them like always you guys determine what you guys trade but let's get to the action today i did have some good trades on earlier today i do want to talk about the day trade action too that was on crm and adobe but i'm going after crm again here team so i just went after it Got in here before the show here towards the 61 level here. So it's closer down here towards the 60 level. We're going to look to see if we get that breakdown here. One thing that I can clearly see is where our out is going to be. That's above 193s. Anything getting above there, we will get out of this name. We'll look to see if we get some turnaround in Salesforce. Another trade that I'm taking in, team, is CrowdStrike. You guys can see right here from this line was looking for this to kind of break down. Took my shot at the 127.77s. That was right around here when we started to break this line here. So now we're starting to make our way back down. Can we get to the VWAP and really start to crack? You guys can see this on the 15 minute. Really want to start seeing this head right back down to the VWAP and 126 here. And the last one, trying to take down the Tesla Dragon. As Tesla started to show a little bit of some weakness at the one hour area, when looking for Tesla here off the one hour, I can see multiple highs getting up there failing, multiple highs getting up there failing. So I'm taking my shot for the move right back down here. Of course, like always, everything with a little bit of grain of salt. We'll see what happens here. If it is a good setup or not, I'm taking some shots and we'll see. Well, yesterday was really, really good. We had to cut Microsoft today, but we still cut it for a winner. Really nice win on Microsoft this week. Really nice win on AMD this week. We did get stopped out earlier in the week in some names like, of course, some uh, health names and some oil names, but that has been coming back. I was actually looking at Chevron today for potentially taking a little bit of a swing trade on the hourly lows here. And you guys can see, it's right off of those lows, so we'll see if oil can come higher next week. Not going to take it just because I'm in already enough trades, but I'm definitely keeping an eye out. How we doing out there? What's going on? Shannon, how we doing? Hammer, what's going on? Just got done listening to Dr. Doom. What's going on out there? Easy Mike, love these days into job reporting. Long weekend. Let's go. How we doing out there? Lori, you like it? Yeah, changing things up a little bit, right? I, I mean, the camera's good. We got to just make the, the camera bigger so you guys can see us, right? But at least this way, you guys get my charts. You guys get what I'm looking at. And you know what's in the background here. Those are the stocks, the sectors. That's what I'll be rolling through. Like always, if you guys want to take a look at a sector or industry, you guys can always call them out. I'll make sure to show them up here. So let's keep rolling. Let's take a look at what else is making moves on the day and to see if we can start getting into the profits. There is one trade that I do have into the red right now, which is CNC. 
I took this trade on a starter here and then added it into like kind of the 16, 16 area. But I really didn't want to see this one break 66 today. We kind of bounced off of that just recently. So I'm trying to look to see if we can get this back through 66 level. Of course, it's kind of more like a symmetrical triangle. But one thing I could see from yesterday is we were kind of trying to hold in around here towards this resistance. Can we get this to come back up through the 66, 38? I'll like this one. And this one was actually brought to us by the chat right here. You guys out there mentioned this one and it came on my radar. I liked it today. Like always, you guys make your full decisions, full investment decisions. And you guys waved the flag for me. So I kept an eye on it and I liked it today. I took the shot. I couldn't catch up to CVS. That was one that I saw pulling back today. Cigna was one that we talked about yesterday. That had a really good day pulling back. I'm going to keep an eye on these, especially if the healthcare names are going to go higher. Another one that I was looking at for potentially an entry was IBB. And man, that took off. I talked about this on pre-market prep because I was looking for it, but just missed the play here. If you look on the five minute, we had a really nice opportunity to get this one really early in the day. This is what I was looking at yesterday. So I was a little bit excited. I was like, okay, this is looking good. I like the area. Some healthcare names have recently come up. Can we get to get this above the 130s? It did give us that 130 look right out the gates. And if you pull this a little bit further, look how you get this pullback right to the action. That's what we want to be seeing. A nice little bounce there right above 130s. So what should I have been doing? Even if I missed the first move to 130, looking for the pullback opportunity to catch that pullback and then get the rally up, right? Well, right here, we got that 130 break. You guys can see it. Then pulls right back to that 130. Could have definitely gave me an opportunity to take this into the intraday action. And you guys see it just riding a little bit higher now up there towards 130, 113s. Going to have to wait for pullbacks on this now, but it does look good. IBB getting started today and different stocks in this area definitely looking strong. Let me show you guys this. Of course, this is going to be in the biotech area, and this is the biotech outlook unweighted, right? This is another important thing. If it's unweighted, it will show us how it really is working right now. And take a look at the weekly. We're starting to work our way back. Let's start seeing this could actually move here. Um, let's take a look at some of the bigger names in the biotechs and how they've been working. NVO, look at this takeoff on this one. This one just hasn't stopped at all. So I'm not going to go too crazy about NVO, but man, really nice chart there and not touching it. Amgen was one that I was looking at earlier in the week. This has really gotten going. It's all the way up there to 254. I'm going to be waiting for at least like 50% retracement of these levels to see if we can ever get back there. That's below the 245. If we do get back there, I'll take a shot. But for right now, Amgen already gotten going and could get through this resistance right above it, then really start pushing back here towards the 270s. Gilead, nice little pullback today. This one was an opportunity, I feel like, as we're pulling back here towards these levels. But I'm not taking it right now. I also thought about Regenron today. That's one's going higher. It definitely looked good earlier on in the day when it was starting to recover here. The big thing with this one is just it's so expensive. So if I went after this one, I'll be honest, team. I'm not going to get many shares of this company, right? It's just too expensive. So I would have to really give it room to big, make a big breakout move. We'll see what happens here and Regenron. All right, VRTX, another one that's been strong as of late. You guys can see these charts really strong. Now, what do you see here? Triple top action on VRTX. So you could get a little pullback from this, but if we can get above these levels, we can continue to climb. Doesn't look bad at all. Moderna, recently reversal from the bottom. Biogen, really pushing strong. So you see what I'm getting at here? Definitely a strong area with these biotechs. And let's take a look at the different areas in healthcare. Look at the drug manufacturers. Look how this has really taken off lately. This is what I really truly like to point to on this show. It's not necessarily just about the trading action, right? It's also about understanding rotation, right? Where's the money going to? That's so important because there's always going to be pockets where people are looking for what? They're looking for the safety trade. They're looking for the trade that's hot. And they're trying to rotate money from the, the winning stocks into the next winning stocks, right? Right now, it seems like healthcare is getting that push and I'm keeping a close eye on it. We've talked about healthcare all week long. We even talked about it early with uh, Scott from Beat the Bench. 
And it seems like they are staying strong. Take a look at these names in this week, right? I'm just going to show you the weekly candle just to show you the strength on the week. Look at the week for uh, Johnson & Johnson. Look at the week for Lilly here. Look at the week for Merck. Look at Avi going higher. Pfizer turning around. AZN, new high. NVS, new high. Bristol Myers really getting going today and announcing a dividend. That play looked good through 70. SNY continuing to go. GSK really ripping out, right? Well, there you guys see it. That's definitely going to help out the XLV, right? We're talking about the spider healthcare names. These are definitely going higher right now. I'll be looking for pullback in XLV, especially if we can get it back towards like this 130.50 area where you see the 9 EMA, the 200 all around it. This is definitely something to keep a watch out for. We'll see what happens. And one thing to note is this did, did do kind of like a golden cross here and then actually did another bearish cross here. That just shows you how quickly healthcare declined and quickly came back. So this 50 could easily cross right back over that 200. If that does happen, that's a nice bullish outlook. I'll be looking for some pullback on this. All right, how we doing out there? Carly, what's going on? Shannon, what's going on out there? Hammer, these days are tough. Yes, it is. Yes, it is indeed. All right, hit that like. Like always, team, cues are bleeding in the last hour in my fourth round of SOCKS-S today. Let's take a look at the cues, see how that's working right now. I'm keeping an eye out to see if this is going to continue leaking. You can see how we started that leak. I had that pattern drawn. We're right now towards that part where we could really start breaking down. CNC is coming down pretty fast here. Don't want this to break like, let's say, 50, uh, 65, 80s today. So I'll have that ready to get out if I need to. Let me make sure that that's ready to go here. Yeah, if it breaks 80, I'm out of here. So we'll see what happens on this one. But the other one starting to get in the green. Tesla, nice move there. Starting to have a nice effect here as we're going down. Once we get to 84s, I can take some profits on Tesla and really like to see this start coming down. I have 185.34. So I'm looking to at least get over a point on the first shares. And if you guys see here, it's all about risk to reward, right? So the risk was about this box here higher. We want to at least make that box, if not more, on the first return. This is my first return. And then really looking to expand that box about three times where we could get down here towards like kind of the 183s and 182 level. We'll see what happens on Tesla if I can get to those reward profits. We'll see. It's a tough one. Tough to trade indeed today. Let's take a look at the financials. I think that that was an important outlook. Look how they're starting to get weak here. They hung out all day long. Now let's see if they just hit them on the downturn here towards the end of the day. You guys can see how this is kind of a little bit of a symmetrical triangle look. Now starting to break down. Let's see if we get a big candle towards 127.25. Bank of America starting to show that weakness there. Goldman Sachs. Will they come after the banks here towards the end of the day? We'll find out, right? Should go down numbers tomorrow. Yeah, especially if the numbers come in and just kind of wipe out this market. Something to keep an eye out. Beer, one that I got stopped out early on in the day for. I was actually going for this short. So I got stopped out on Deer early team. I'm not going to come after it here, but does it look good? Yeah, it does look good. It does look juicy. I like that bounce back. I like how Cat is weaker than Deer. That actually shows me a good level to risk off of, especially when you're kind of using the one hour chart, right? You can see how this was kind of the support. And now it's been using this uh, 372 area as resistance. That could be my out now. At least I know where I need to get out. And you can see it wick through there. It didn't really show body close up there. So that's something definitely to keep an eye out for. All right, let's go. Financial services led the uh, sectors today. Healthcare behind that. We've talked about that. It is pulling back now. Could get stopped out in that CNC. But we got in some of these tech names into the green like CrowdStrike. So I'm going to keep an eye out to see if they can actually start really cutting down. Utilities in the red today. Energy getting dragged down here as we saw that really spike on that gap up. It really hasn't done anything since that OPEC mention. You guys out there, smash the like. Let's keep it going. We got over 110 of you guys here. Want to keep getting more and more to start swing trading. So do me that favor. Like always, team, tell your friends to trade. This is the place you want to be. Hit that share button. Let everybody know. 
Start swing trading is the place to be to end the day. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at what else is making moves here. Financial services still hanging in there. We'll see if they do this down cut here towards the close. Look at that day PM. Look at this. If you expand this hourly, how this does still look bearish, right? I mean, this looks like kind of a little bit of a bear pennant coming in here, right? You know, you kind of you kind of have that little tightening area here. Let's see if we really do get this down break below this kind of crack and really just start seeing that really take it down here. So I'll make that line bigger. That's kind of the line in the sand right now. If we can crack through that, get towards 127, this isn't going to be looking good for JPM. We'll see what happens in the queues here towards the close. Definitely pulling back. The SPY pulling back a little bit weaker than even the queues. You can see how that cracked. Tried to get back there towards the 409. Definitely rejected there. Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. Are you going to give me that move to 184? I'm trying to take some profits, baby. It's hard not to do it already. Monday, going higher. If you're looking for something that is reversing a little bit, this one, not looking too bad. You can also take a look at some other names that are going higher right now. Team making a move back. This one coming back after really a hard cut out the open, man. That was a hard cut to come back from. So teams definitely getting some downside action here. We got to be careful. All right, you guys in the chat, what's going on out there? Trying to catch up with you. Lily, lots of money being made in obesity. Yeah, definitely. I mean, let's just be honest. If they can get that drug out, they're going to get that lift. T on Y, what's up, man? How we doing? What is, what is that in the background you got there in the picture? I want to know what you got, T. All right, what else is going on out there? Pigs, where are the pigs at? Nah, we want to be bulls and bears here, baby. Meta, 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 says Wally. Let's take a look at meta. This is one that is starting to top out there, and it looks to me like what? Like a little bit of like a head and shoulders outlook here. So it doesn't look too bad if you're looking at it on a five minute for the breakdown right now. And at least a pullback to the VWAP, right? Doesn't mean that we're going to completely break down. But one thing to mention is this daily chart, man. Now we're getting some double touch up here towards kind of the 216.64. This is, this is definitely areas to watch because if we can continue higher through these levels, yeah, the stock can continue ripping. But this could be some topping out area here for Meta. And where could we pull back to? We could pull back beneath this 9 EMA. I've talked about it myself that I need to be careful with Meta, right? Um, it's been actually a pretty good name as of late, right? And I don't want to be fighting it too much until we actually start really to break down, right? And how am I going to know that? I'm going to know that by watching these kind of nine EMAs, the light blue line that you see there. I want to start seeing price action close below that nine EMA before I go after Meta. Because if not, I'm just fighting strength, especially if I want to short it. If I want to go long, I have those opportunities when it pulls back to that 9 EMA to get those longs. You guys can see those longs show up all around here. When it showed up here, right? Then it ripped away from the 9 EMA, comes back to the 9 EMA right here. Another opportunity. It goes back up away from the 9 EMA and then comes right back to the 9 EMA. So these are levels that we could be looking for pullbacks. Now, what I'd be looking for, does it flip there? and just start washing out those bolts. That's what I'm looking at. All right, what else is being called out in the chat? How is AMC doing today? I'll stay focused. I don't know if AMC might slight me off that focus, but let's take a look. AMC did make a move here towards five today. And of course, this is a lot based on the news that there's a battle right now between what? Between eight and AMC, right? What is gonna work out here? Is it gonna be eight that you wanna have? Or is it going to be short AMC that you want to have? That's where it gets a little difficult. Honestly, this is a situation that I'll just stay away from. How's the stock look overall? I mean, it is trying to bottom out on the weekly towards four. But is that a strong bottom? No, I mean, it could easily come right back to three. So I think this is something that we just need to actually watch. Get through some weekly levels, right? And so you can see here on the weekly levels, we fought when we got to nine. We couldn't get through it last time. We couldn't get through it in December. We need to get back through that 820s and into the nines if you think this is actually going to get that ride. All right. I miss, I feel like I missed the boat on Meta. Don't worry, Quantum. You and you and I both, brother. A lot of people miss this boat. But no one was thinking that they were going to turn around unless they did something different. And they didn't do anything different. 
It's not about metaverse that this is higher. This came back based on the over like kind of selling off of the advertising game. So if meta is going to come back down, it's going to be because they have trouble with advertising. Now, if they don't have trouble with advertising, this could get back up there towards like 235. There's a resistance up there that it could get up there and then finally turn around. So they say there's no such thing as V bottoms. I don't know if they're really right because look at this. This is pretty V-ish to me, right? I mean, that's as V bottom as you get. So that's where we have to be careful as investors and also be willing to take some shots, right? Like I always talk about it. I don't know if my trades are going to go good for me. The only thing I can do is take some shots and see what happens, right? That's how you trade. You never know. The only thing you do is you work on your discipline and pat that shoulder every now and then when you follow that discipline, right? We'll see what happens here on Meta. All right, let's keep going. Let's take a look at what else is being talked about in the chat here. What do you guys got here? Let me see. All right, JetBlue being mentioned in the chat. Let's go to industrials. Let's take a look at that. Of course, we talked about deer and cat, but let's take a look at some other ones. One like Lockheed Martin. That one's continuing. Man, I'm still going to be kicking myself on missing this move to 490s. This one won't be a bad move if it gets there to 500. Defensive names, not looking too bad. GE, 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 finally starting to show a little bit of weakness, but really not cracking. I'm looking to see if we crack the 9 EMA. The same, same thing that I talked about on Meta, would we crack and start showing below that price action? And we're about to do it. So I'm not going to do it today, but in the next week or so, I could be short in GE. I'm just going to keep it on watch for right now. All right, we'll see what happens on this one. Don't get trapped in the narrative. I hate meta, but it's been good. Yeah, I agree. I, it definitely has been good, especially as of late. All right, let's go to the airlines. Let's go to those like American Airlines and the others. I'll take a look at JetBlue for you, Michael. Uh, American Airlines is one that I was thinking at 14. Now we've come down to 14 how many times? One, two, three times here. So I really got to start considering is this the time to buy American Airlines or is it down in this space? I'm going to say it's down in this space. So I'm going to look for a move back down to 13s. And then, yeah, I'll take a shot off the slow kind of uh, 1188s. But for right now, I think that with more expensive oil, potential recession concerns, this is not something I just want to be jumping all over on. I was feeling better about the airlines overall just because their outlook was given so well on their recent earnings. So maybe that can save it. Like a UAL gave really good earnings and then they came after it with like kind of negatives when it took like this hard downturn, right? We'll see what happens to their earnings. And of course, if they can get back down to further support. All right, Debt Blue was the other one that we wanted to look at. Let's take a look at that one. Now down to 690s. I was looking at this one when it was at 850s. It's already back down here towards the lows. Let's see if it can come towards around 668 and then turn around from there. So you can see how we could come into this area about like 70s, pull back from there and actually bounce out of that. I would look for another bounce off of that level. Unless you're using this weekly candle 671 as you're out, that's okay too because you'll be right on it when you come back to that support. We'll look to see if we get back up there to eight. Definitely a bearish looking chart, but needs to turn around, right? Like really the key here is look where the pandemic was. You're right off of those pandemic numbers. So that's where you got to be careful. You break through that. You could be going lower, right? And anybody that bought in this time and they watched it go to 20 and then now it's about to give them a red trade. Oh, that's a frustrating one indeed. All right, we'll see what else is going on here. We can take a look at save just for one more to take a look at it. Spirit pulling back. This one at least looks like it's trying to bottom around the 17s. I can see that kind of bottoming action. So at least this one doesn't look like it's as close to the pandemic low. So not as bad, but JetBlue definitely off its lows there. Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. What are we doing here? All right, we're bouncing back here. We got to the 184.50s, but wasn't able to hang on there. And what's going on in the queues? You can see how the queues are actually getting a little bit of a push back here. So they could start breaking back to the upside here. 
So we got to be careful with some of these trades. Don't want to get caught, especially over the weekend. We'll see what happens here if they start to reverse. All right, CNC came right back. At least that one didn't get me out. That one doesn't look too bad. We're going to keep working it here. Crowd strike still in the green, but slowly but surely coming towards that break-even spot. We'll see if we start getting some fit, uh, stepping out here. Q's were coming back down, found the bounce. Spy bouncing a little bit. We'll see what happens if we get another flush. All right, let's keep up with the chat here. No closing print for Joel today. Hmm, guess not. But you got the swing trading show, of course, baby. Nah, I'm just playing. I don't know if Joel's down or not today. But let's keep going. Gamblers buying the market right now? Hmm. Probably. You never know, right? I mean, they're taking some shots. Uh, let's go to let's go to some different stocks here. Let's keep it going. Basic materials definitely pulled back after starting to get strong again. Uh, been looking at this area. Agricultural inputs got wrecked today, man. This started to come back, but this started to look really nice right about here. I'll show you guys. So right about here, this looked good. And that was when we were in kind of January. It started to come up, started to come up, started to come up. Boom. Now rejecting the support there. So a stock like, let's say, MOS that I thought maybe could start coming back, getting hit hard there. And so what does this tell me? This tells me that the inputs, like especially like these basic material names, there is some deflation going on in these names. Let's take a look at steel. Steel coming down today. Um, definitely got hit hard on this week with Nucor. As this one went down from around the 160 area, right back down there towards like the 140s, now bouncing around. Seems like steel just can't catch a break as of late. We'll see what happens on these names. BTU, coal pulling back, AMR. It just doesn't look good in basic materials. When I look at the cyclical names, that's where the, you have those high beta names. That's where the battle is right now back and forth. I feel like we have days where we have good days, like Netflix coming up a little earlier in the week, and then days where we start pulling back, like the last three days, right? Netflix chart says it all, a kind of a little mountain up and a little pull back there. We'll take a look at some of these. Definitely smash the like out there. We got over 136 of you guys. Let's see if we get a couple more in here before the close. Let's take a look at that charge point, Daniel. Back to eight. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's going right back down. Looks like eight. I have 807 right there highlighted. We'll look to see how this gun keeps going. And this is one area that I always get stunned at. I'm like, I know they keep talking about charging stations and how they want EV to take off. But have we, have you guys seen like a whole bunch of charging stations just starting to get built? No. And that's, that's what tells me more and more how that big EV boom that they keep talking about could be like five, six, seven, ten years down the line before we really see the EV boom, right? I know they keep thinking about that, you know, all the cars are going to turn to electric. But if we don't got this, if we don't got the infrastructure for it, it isn't going to happen, team. So these stocks like ChargePoint, EVGo. They're only going to go as much as that building goes, right? And even we had a nice little week for EVgo pulling back here towards the gap. Could be right back into that gap zone. So we got to see what happens. There's a, there is an EV bubble, but it's going to take forever to come out, I think. It's not going to be this year. It's not going to be next year. It's probably not even going to be 2025. I'm thinking it's probably down the line to 27 or further. All right, let's keep seeing what else is going on. Value Tech having a good day, says EKS. Let's run through some of those Value Tech names. INTC, hmm, bouncing back today. I was looking at this one. I feel like this one's a little extended, but that don't mean it can't run, right? It is starting to come back up there, came back to the support, now trying to recover 33s. That's going to be the level to keep watching. You can see it on the hourlies, how it's starting to try to make its way back to that level. A close back closer towards 3298s. You're looking good here in Intel. Let's roll to the next one. Oracle. Oracle not not looking not looking bad. I'll tell you that much. Nice recovery on this one. This one didn't flinch one bit. Look at this. This is a strong stock in this environment right now. Almost back here to the 2022 top is Oracle. And this one's just been climbing and climbing, stair stepping its way higher. 
All right, let's go, go to another one. TSM, this is one I can't trust. Did it, it did have a decent day today, but I'll tell you right now, I can't trust anything with Taiwan. I can't trust anything with China, anything with Russia. It's just too difficult for me. I can't trust it, team. Microsoft came back today, and I'm glad I got out of that one for a gain, right? I mean, this thing would have ripped through my 285 yesterday. And that's how it is, team. You got to know when to hold and fold them and also be able to see the turns. I could see the strength in Microsoft today. I wasn't going to fight that. So I was really quickly able to get out of this one for a gain on the short side. And now you're seeing it. What is it doing? It's ripping higher. And where did it catch? Right on that 9 EMA. We've been talking about it multiple times today. And you can see the strength. Microsoft and Google must be AI related since the others aren't up that much. Yeah, it could be AI related, but it could just be Megatech. Megatech kept going today. Look at Apple. Right back up, right? That's what happens sometimes, team. So Tesla's coming back here. We'll see what happens on this one. It is starting to come back here. I need to take a look at the Qs, team, to see if this is going to push through to know that I'll get out. Because if it does come up here towards this 48, we got to get out really quickly here. So going to really pay attention here on some of these names. You might just cut Tesla break even or right near that break even spot. But just going to keep watch on it right here. All right. Just got to go ahead and make sure that we're ready to get out if needed here. All right, setting some stops here. Just make sure that if I do get hit, I'm able to get the hell out. Sorry about that, team. All right, focusing in here. Q's trying to get back to that level of 318.50s. We'll see if it gets up there. All right, just putting some protective plays in here just in case. You can see how CRM is pushing. This is about to get me out on this one. All right, we'll see what happens on that CRM play if it goes to that next level or does the Qs just reject here to get above that 318.50. We'll see what happens. Big risk on reversal on uh, Charles Schwab today. Hmm. This one got a nice little push up there towards the 49.50s, pulling back now. I'm telling you, the close is going to be wicked here. we got to pay attention to see what happens. What will happen to JPM here towards the close? Will we get a nasty wicked move down? Or will we get a bounce to the upside? That's what I'm really focusing on. Technology still up on the day. We'll see how uh, some of these tech names close. It's definitely important to kind of watch some of the bigger ones like NVIDIA. There's some strength there. I'll tell you right now. So it doesn't look good for me. But hey, that's okay. I had a really good day yesterday with AMD and Microsoft. So if we give back a little bit today, that's all good. All right, what else is being called out in the chat? Let's keep going. Let's take a look at what else is going on. Moderna, Moderna definitely having a good day. These biotechs, they're, they're, they're screaming at me right now. This IBB screaming at me today. That's why I called it out in pre-market prep because it definitely looked like a, a stock that hadn't gone in the healthcare names. It was an ETF that really started going. So maybe LabU, I talked about this yesterday. Maybe this is an opportunity off the bottoming action here, coming back towards five. Now this is an opportunity that I could actually watch during the intraday to see if I see continued strength to maybe grab it and rent it a little bit. Can't go wrong. All right, real estate down today. Energy still down. How's it closing? A little bit of a bounce there, but XLM ugly last like pretty much hour on that stock. So doesn't look good there. Let's go back to JPM, see if we get this cut through. The SPY is trying to come back here towards that 409 and hold it. But it just seems to me like we've gotten to the point where there's a lot of indecision right now. So we'll see what happens in the last kind of five or 10 minutes here in the market. All right, team, we're going to go ahead and play a quick little trailer. We'll be right back. I'm just going to get a little drink of water and keep going. Introducing portfolio synchronization with your brokerage. Now you can securely connect your brokerage account to Benzinga Pro, opening a world of personalization. Screen lightning fast news just for the stocks you own. Set alerts for news catalysts that affect only the companies you care about. It's all possible with a simple click and a secure protective connection. Overcome uncertainty and connect your portfolio to Benzinga Pro today.
All right, team, let's keep it going here. Let's get back to the action. How are we doing out there in the chat? Walter, no early. What? Come on, Walter. You got to know what the closing imbalances are. You got to let me know. We're always looking at it for you, man. Uh, the Q's starting to turn around from that 318s. It just seems to me like it's getting heavy here, but are we going to get the down action before the close? Very much could just hang out up here. And hanging out up here makes me not want to play these overnight because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow with that jobs number. I can say at least that it feels like the number is going to come in a little bit hot, like jobless claims a little bit higher because that's what we saw also with the initial jobless claims today. But hey, non-farm payroll, it's going to be interesting. That's for sure. All right. There's some sell side starting out. We'll see. We'll see. All right. We'll see what happens on these trades towards the close here. I mean, it's just hanging out here. It could keep going higher. I mean, look at Microsoft. Look at Apple. Really strong moves today. And I caught this move early in Apple today. Should have maybe taken a shot on Apple. That one's a hard one for me to go after. I find it all the time that I watch Apple. I don't take the trade. Nice little bottoming on that one hour chart. Came right back up. All right, here towards the close. Still haven't gotten the stop outs there. I'm just looking around to see what's going to happen, but. Hmm. All right, we'll see if we actually get out on some of these. Tesla is actually in the green now. It turned around a little bit, started pulling back here. We'll see. It's just a battle right now. I'm still in the green, but not really getting the action that I thought we'd get towards the close. Good news is bad news. Bad news is good news. Good news is bad. All news is bad, really. Let's just be honest. <laughs> All right. F forward coming down today. Tesla can that come down towards the close. Taking a look at that. Where's Lucid, man? $7.70. Hmm. The daily just going sideways. Not much happening there. Rivian, I was asked to bond yesterday. That's not been doing much here. It just seems to me like if you want to be in areas, it's like healthcare, technology right now, and maybe you're shorting industrials, but where else could you want to be in? Not much. There's not much out there that you want to be in. Utilities pulling back today, but like I talk about on utilities, that usually is just a stair step up. So nice maybe opportunity to actually jump in the trade today. We'll find out. What's going on, Tiny Trader? It's good to see you. Always still doing your thing. I love to see it. Keep doing it. That's what it's all about. FDX being called out in the chat. Let's take a look here. All right, FedEx going higher and just stair-stepping its way, right? This is one that, man, I remember when it did this gap down. Oh, I watched it climb this whole gap up. I still have it written there because I just like to just take a look there. Created on October 25th. That's when I started looking at this to see if it would fill this. And that was down here when, when we were down here on FedEx. I was thinking, would we ever fill this gap? That was a beautiful move back up on FedEx. And it could eventually pull back. I think eventually you're going to run into a level where it just gets a little bit too, too hot. Maybe it's this 240 level. But it could stair-step its way to that 240 and then pull back. Definitely would be looking for pullbacks kind of like the 215, 205 range to see what happens then in FedEx. But it doesn't look too bad there. Flowing from banks to money markets not bode well for the health of the commercial banks. Yeah, it's definitely hard on that end. FRC, how's that doing? Not doing anything today. APM, what's the close going to give us? Look how that's just starting to kind of crack here. Let's see if we actually start seeing some downside action come into the banks here towards the close. Q's overall rejecting that 318.48. So let's see if we can finally get some down action here in the last 20 minutes of the market. All right, meta, meta, meta. Also showing another topping around the 217s. It seems like this is the fourth top there, but it's really only the third, right? I mean... Double top right around the 217s there for Meta. All right, let's keep going. It's going to be a hard one. Thoughts on Sark. Sark is pulling back. I do like the outlook overall if we can get back above 45. So you got to just know where you want to risk off of. There's pretty much a range between 46 and like 40 right now that it keeps holding. So maybe it's just one more hold of this 40. 
It's been about one, two. Let's see if it comes back to like 41, 40, uh, 50 area, and then come back through that 43. What's it going to take? It's going to take some of these growth names really getting pounded. Like let's say Roku getting hit again back below the 60s. Let's say um, like Snow right back down towards that 140 and breaking towards the 135. Roblox turning around. This one's a pretty strong one right now, hanging on towards this 46, a move back down towards 40, right? Unity turning around back down towards 28. That's what it's going to take for your Sark to take off. FRC showing some relative strength right now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it pushed up a total a total one penny, man. Total of like two pennies. Yeah, it's it's not doing anything right now. I think we got to really be careful, team. JPM now down towards that 127.42 that I kind of put that hard line on. Wanted to see if we were just going to cut down towards the end of the day. Looks like that's what we're getting right now. So FAZ is a potential here to kind of play towards the end of the day. We'll see what happens on this one. It has pulled back. Can it take off towards the 23s? Doesn't look too bad there. Airbnb, kind of interesting play today. I did see it kind of pull back. I just don't trust that we're going to have like this huge travel movement because inflation staying high. We still have high interest rates. There's a lot of like negatives starting to show up. The labor market is starting to get weaker. We hear a lot about layoffs. We now don't expect inflation to come down anytime soon because if the Fed is going to stop raising interest rates, inflation is going to slowly trickle down, right? Slowly. That could take years to get back to 2%. So it's hard. It's a hard market. I can tell you that is that. It's not just one way. And there's a lot of things that can change in the market really quickly, especially if the bank concerns come back. We'll see. I mean, at least this chart doesn't look the best. All right, let's take a look at Bank of America. How's that closing here towards the end? And Tesla back into the green, but not really breaking down, just kind of hanging in there. Q's finally rejecting a little bit stronger here, the, uh, going from a kind of a green to red outlook there on the 15. Let's see if this brings a red candle back towards 317.81s, and we actually make a move to the VWAP. That's what I want to see, a nice move to the VWAP on the Q's here towards the close, and I'll be deep into the green. Airbnb had a report from a big bear. Hmm. Let's take a look. I didn't really catch that too much on Airbnb today. Let me take a look here. Oh, the bear cave. My man went after it. Oh, this is going to be an interesting one. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Uh, stay focused. I know exactly who put out a short report on this. That's Edwin Dorsey. And that's from the bear cave. I'm going to have him on next week so we can talk to him exactly about what he sees there on Airbnb. So if you got a question or you're an investor out there and you want to ask the person that did this short report, we'll stay tuned next week. I'll get them on right here on Start Swing Trading. We'll, we'll talk to them. No worries, team. We'll take a look at it. All right, Mitch, uh, any pre-earnings moves before next week? Hmm, the banks. The banks, the banks, the banks. That's what we want to be thinking about. The banks are what's going to start it off. And a lot of the times, what do I see? I see a lot of times a run into Goldman Sachs earnings. That's what happened last time when the stock was down here at the 344s. It did this run right before earnings and then got smacked down into earnings. Then right before, smacked down. So the only thing is, this time, will they come after Goldman Sachs before their earnings? thinking that they're going to be good. That's something you got to think about. And another thing is, will all the banks be good or will one of them kind of wreck the other? That's something to keep in mind. City has done it before where it's done this kind of like little surprise move. So keep your eyes on City too. That could change around. All right, I got you. Stay focused. Don't worry. Come back next week. We'll talk a little bit more about Airbnb and we'll bring on Edwin Dorsey. I'll make sure to have have them on early on in the week. All right, let's keep going. Let's take a look at what else is going on. 
EKS, thanks for that tip. I'll check into that. Yeah, definitely. Always need some safety, man. Safety first, right? Uh, stagflation years, not months. Remember the late 80s. Oh, man. It seems like we're going to stagflation. That's where it gets a little difficult. All right, SPY trying to push back up. You can see we're just we're just battling here. It doesn't seem like we want to go anywhere here towards the close. So uh, with that being said, I don't see much out there. It's about 347. We'll look to see if this can actually start cutting down. But man, it isn't looking the best today. I, that I can say. Uh, like CRM keeps trying to go higher. I keep kind of staying in this for right now. It's right around that 193. Tesla looks a little bit better. CRM is just like right on that spot where it could just break above and get me out of this. So um, I have I have it right above here. So if I if I need to, I can get out really quickly. We'll find out. Q's overall just kind of just chopping around here, and it's I think it's going to all depend on the numbers tomorrow. This could wreck these these charts, or it could keep them going higher. So. It's going to be a tough one to go overnight, but I might take a couple of them. I might take like two of them, maybe close one of them just to limit my risk because I don't want to be too much to the short side. I do have CNC to the long side, so that can balance me out a little bit. But like always, it's not going to be an easy one here towards the close. Starting to see a little bit of some downside, but really need to see that big bar come in to give me the confidence. All right, KRE. KRE is one that I actually saw bouncing off the VWAP multiple times today. So this actually showed a little bit of strength today. And you guys can see that on the 15 minutes. You guys can see how it's holding in here into that VWAP hold. Yeah, it's holding pretty well right now. Let's see if we get a move to 42.75 if the KRE wants to go a little bit higher. But definitely, I'm not trading this, man. It just doesn't look the best. But this does look like you could have been having some people trying to load in there in the 42s. And now you're really starting to get this a little bit higher. And then they load in the 4250s. They're just kind of like stair-stepping it up 50 cents higher. And there is no pre-market prep tomorrow, team. We will be missing pre-market prep like always. We'll be back on Monday. There's no market tomorrow. So we're going to take the day off. We're going to let Dennis Dick have a day off. I know that can, uh, the Canadian never takes a day off, but you know how it is. All right, let's get back to what else out there. Mickey D's short. Hmm. Did we ever get the news from Mickey D's about their layoffs? I know they said that they were going to do some layoffs, but did we ever get exacts on that? I don't think we did. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, I don't think we ever got the exact cut, cuts there. Do you guys know? I mean, I was looking at it right now. I, I mean, they shut they shut their offices, remember, early on in the week, but I didn't get an exact number on their layouts, on their layoffs. So that's where it gets a little bit hard here. I'll even give you the headline that I can see from Benzinga Pro here, which is McDonald's layoffs reportedly prompt Tom. Uh, temporary shuttering of U.S. office. It is coming back right now towards this kind of 283 area. I don't know, man. I I think, you know, one of the things is I don't like to fight a trend that this that it's this strong, right? It's at all-time highs. Let's just be honest. All-time highs. Might not be something that we want to short, right? There's a lot of more opportunities, I feel like, than shorting McDonald's. All right, catching up with the chat. What else is being brought out there? Shannon, nope, they'll probably announce it over the weekend. Yeah, they'll probably do that over the weekend. You know how it goes. Uh, what will happen if data comes in hot in the tech space? Hmm, that's where it gets interesting, right? Because there's a couple of outlooks there, stay focused. So let's say for any reason, the number does come in hot and it shows that there's more jobless claims being mentioned, right? And that the, that the finally the labor market is showing some weakness. There's a couple of ways to look at that, right? You can look at that, that the Fed is finally achieving their initiative because that's what they were trying to do, right? They've been talking about how they've been looking to see unemployment spike up. They've been essentially trying to bring the layoffs higher, right? So that's a good thing and bad thing, right? Because it shows weakening of the economy also. And so this is where you saw a lot of people fight Jerome Powell in that kind of Senate uh, kind of meeting when he was talking with Congress, like back and forth. And you 
It's all yelling and, and different uh, people kind of attack him. Um, and the reason why they were attacking him, because they were saying that, hey, if you want to get unemployment to this level, this amount of people are going to lose their jobs. And that's a negative for the economy. But what he was saying is that we necessarily need to do that to get to the stability that we need and to get inflation down to where they want to get it. So that's where it gets a little bit confusing of whether it's going to be a good thing for tech or a bad thing for tech. I think think about it for the overall market. It does show that inflation is coming down and that the Fed is finding their initiative. But it also shows that the economy is starting to weaken. If you look at the ISM numbers from early on this week, that also showed some weakening of the economy. So that's one thing that we're starting to see, that the economy is kind of slowing down. That slowdown brings what concern? It brings recession concern. So the whole thing here is, is the Fed going to bring everything to a screeching halt? And that's what could bring us right back down. If we're going to you know, go into a recession, yeah, I think this market comes right back down. And that's where it gets confusing. It's like, well, tech is telling us that we don't have to worry about anything, essentially. Tech is like, forget the banks, push that to the side, forget about that, forget about this. We're climbing that wall of worry, and we're just going to keep on running. The truth is, is this could turn around. I feel like overall, this has gotten to the point where the Fed is just handcuffed, where they pretty much at this point are just going to be on a watch moment. If the bank concerns come in, they could do a rate cut. If for any reason there is no bank concerns and they're able to shore up those certainties, then they can just be on the pause until they see inflation come down to a level that they like, then they could cut. This is what I think is really going to happen here. It's just going to be a prolonged what? In the cave. The Fed is going in the cave and we're going to be wondering when the hell are they going to come out of the cave because that's what I think is going to happen. They're just going to go away and meeting by meeting, they're going to tell us that we're just watching inflation come down. That's our main focus and always staying present, aware that we can raise rates or drop rates. They're going to keep the option open on both sides. All right, let's take a look here towards the close. We are starting to finally get a little bit of some more action. It's about, what, 355? Yeah, about 355. Look at the cues. Finally start giving that action that we were looking for, team. Look at this. Now we finally get that bar that we were looking for towards the 317.81s. And it's a bigger bar, too. So look at JPM here towards the close. This doesn't look too bad. I'll probably hold on to my swings. Look how the banks started to let go. Look how Tesla is going lower now. That looks good for me. I want to see if it can give me like a nice big red bar. I'm going to hold on to this one. CRM didn't stop me out. Now coming right back down to my levels. I could add to the name here, but I'm just going to leave it be, right? CNC, that one could get me out. As it's starting to come back closer towards this 80 here, it'll get me out. But I'll still have the shorts on. We'll see what happens overnight. I'm going to take my shot, team. Of course, I could get hit on these names on Monday, but we'll see what happens. We'll see, right? That's all we can do. We'll see if we get this continued downside action. Numbers coming out tomorrow are going to be very important, but we really won't know the action also until like Sunday when we come back. The future's open. See how that reaction works out, right? All right. Robin Hood looks like a pre-IPO. Yeah, looks horrible. Did Burger King get a new CEO? Who's changing? Who is changing things up? I think they did get a new CEO. Um, I think they did. From what I heard, I think they, they had a new CEO. Wow, the... Wow, need the cues to go down like Charlie Brown? <laughs> we'll see what happens. We definitely got a little bit of a spike down. But look, it's starting to come back already. Now you look to see if this trend line becomes like resistance. So it shouldn't really come back above that trend line, at least from my outlook, right? Technically, that's what I'll be looking for. We'll see what happens here towards the close. It's 356, team. It's been that kind of week. Definitely be careful out there, team. We never know if the market's just going to continue running. There's one thing that I clearly have been talking about is that we are still looking like we're going into expansion mode, which is a mode what? Which is a big breakout mode in the SPY, right? We will see if we get above these levels, but I will still call it that, hey, if we are up here in these levels, team, if we can get up into this area, 
It's a new bull market. So we're really close. And I know that a lot of traders out there are still kind of bearish and you'll still hear it because of the bank concerns. But this was a big test right here. Huge test for us that just happened in March. And what seems like the bears won that test. If we ever come back down below this trend, what I mean, if we ever come back into this zone, that's where we got to be careful. But if we can stay above now, especially 400, oh, we're looking gravy, baby. We'll have to see what happens. Like always, you guys can keep up with all the action right here on Start Swing Trading. I'll keep watching the sectors, the industries, and catching all the moves out there. Like always, never going to be 100% right. One thing you'll see me do is definitely take some shots. And like always, take everything I say with a little grain of salt, all for informational purposes only. We'll see you guys, like always, bright and early, back on Monday morning. No, no school tomorrow, team. No school. Take that day off and enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoy it. I know I will be. Smash the thumbs up. It's good to see you guys in the chat. And especially, you know what? I give shout-outs to all my, my, my guy traders all the time let's give some shout outs to the female traders in our team we got carly in the house definitely carly shout out to you tiny trader shannon miss whitehorse you guys always here supporting us i always love it always great to have you guys so definitely shout out to you and we'll see you guys back on monday hit the like on the way out and like always keep working on your skills there's always ways to learn something new maybe it's intermarket analysis like you see me doing here or maybe it's learning something else like take uh, time and sales reading, level two. What is it that you guys want to learn? Hit the comments after. I'm always willing to talk about different subjects. Maybe it's a learning subject. If you guys want to get into one, you guys can always reach out to me. We'll see you next time.